So let me move on to incidence of a drug use. Okay, so incidence was relatively easy. I mean, incidence is calculated by the num I mean, number of people with an antidepressant initiation divided by total follow-up period among patients at risk for starting the, di the, the an antidepressant. So in that case, non-prevalent users. So let me show the antidepressant prescription period by pink. So this is the period prescribing, receiving antidepressants. And in this example, incidence can be identified as new start of a drug. And so two divided by these observational periods. And I excluded the middle patient because he or she was a prevalent user. So his or she is not at risk for initiating new antidepressant. But I had a kind of question. Prevalent users may stop it and restart it. I mean, even prevalent users at the beginning of CKD cohort entry, he or she may stop it and then restart again. So this could be counted as incidence. And even incident users, one patient may have several incidences, like infections. So one patient could have several infections during follow-up period. Of course, it depends on the type of outcome and drugs. But in this case, I wondered very much between I should count one per patient or several per patient. But at that time, my supervisors give, gave me a good suggestion. So they are my supervisors, nephrologists. And Ian was in my advisory committee. And they often give me very useful questions because I often, you know, get bogged down too much. So I wanted to achieve 100 percent, but she often suggested to me don't spend too much for that small difference. So this is a very good suggestion every time during my PhD. So I decided not to include. I mean, so one patient could have only one incidence, and I stopped the observation after that. So I learned that in pharmacoepidemiology, sometimes you make, you need to make a decision to be simpler and don't spend too much time. And as such, incidence of antidepressant use was 57.2 plus uh, two per person, 1,000 person years in CKD patients. And this number is subtracting 2, 4, 2, 3, 4, 9, minus prevalent users, so just incident users. And I repeated the analysis in the comparison cohort, and this was 42.4. So obviously, I mean, both in terms of prevalence and incidence, patients with CKD were more likely to receive antidepressants. And I also did adjusted analysis by, I mean, logistic regression analysis for prevalence. So adjusted those ratio was 1.4 before adjusting, adjusting for confounding factors. And after adjusting for confounding factors like diabetes and cancer and other lifestyle related factors such as BMI and smoking history, it was 1.35. And I also did survival analysis. In this case, I used Poisson regression analysis, but you could use Cox regression as well. And this was 1.35 and 1.25. So this is adjusted analysis. But I, I believe that these crude values are more informative in this case. But you know, in medical journals, reviewers or editors like adjusted analysis. So it's not bad to show these adjusted ana analysis results. Okay, so do you have any questions or comments so far? Ah, yes. How did you identify the antidepressants with diabetes? Ah, it's a technical method, or it's a way to use the code list, or something like that. Ah, so it's more about the content, or what you chose. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. 
あそうですね、えー、とデータベースはあの、まあ、小病名コードっていう、まあ、リードコードっていうイギリスのオリジナルなものがあってそれで、まあ、だから小病名コードとほとんど一緒です日本の。その中から、まあ、例えばダイアビーティスだとかキャンサーだとかっていうのを、まあ、その項目は自分で決めといてでそれに値する、まあ、いわゆる消防名コードリストを作る必要があってでそれはあの自分で全部作ったわけじゃなくてあのチームの中でやっぱり共有してるんですよ。過去にだからダイアビーティスの研究をやった人はダイアビーティスのコードリストを持っていて。あるいはそのスモーキングの研究をした人はスモーキングをどうやって一番よくアイデンティファイするかあの持ってるんですよ。はい、なんでまあシェアしてる人もいれば勝手に個人で持ってる人もいるのであの基本的にはそのチームの中の過去の研究をやった人を見つけて直接会いに行ってその,そのコードリストくれとかそのアルゴリズムの,そのまあコマンド書いてまあ抽出したりすることもあるので。それやり方をくれって言ってこうなるべく自分で作らないようにで例えばリュウマチ関節リュウマチとかも一応アジャストしたんですけど関節リュウマチの,あの研究をした人はチームの中にいなかったのでそれはもう自分でしょうがないから傷病名リストから作って、まあ、もう一人の医者にチェックしてもらって、まあ、コードを決めたっていう感じになりましたね。はい、よろしいですかね、はいあはいえー、とコモビディティ、えーとまあ、チャルソンコモビディインデックスを使うときも基本的にはその各病気を定義してその合計値でチャルソンコモビディティを定義しているのでチャルソンコモビディティインデックスという形で入っているわけではなくてただ、えーとで、インペーシェントデータに関してはあのチャルソンコモビディティインデックスが入っているんですそれはまあ医者がつけているんですけどで、まあ、あのバリデーションスタディがやられているかという問題は、えー、と病気によります。でただ一般的にはまあ、僕は今よく言ってるのはまあ正しいかどうか置いといてえっとまあ研究のアウトカムと研究のエクスポージャーは常にもう徹底的にこだわって定義する必要があるただまあ後楽因子に関してはまあ最悪そ,のそこまでバリディティが高くなかったとしてもまあどっちかというとその例えばレビューアーの興味というのはアジャストしたかしてないかに興味がいってその正確性まで 100% 求められないというのが実情だと思っているので。まあ、自分の場合は研究のアウトカムとかエクスポージャー、まあ、エクスポージャーはドラッグなことが多いのでそれはまあ事実なのでプリスクリプションは事実なので、まあ、アウトカムの方だけちゃんと徹底的にこだわってない場合にはバリデーション研究をやってそれ以外のまあ項目に関してはなくてもいいのかなっていうのが正直なところです。そうですね、プライオリティですね I should explain in English. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 So his question was about, I mean, how I could identify or define comorbidities or confounding factors. And my answer was, I mean, I, so about, I mean, her question. So I found researchers in my group who have conducted research on each disease. So to, to identify diabetes population. I found researcher who has conducted research on diabetes previously and asked her or him to give me a code list or how to identify, I mean, algorithm to identify diabetes population or diabetes comorbidity. And about his question was about validity of each comorbidity. And so, what, what my, my answer was to. Define study outcome and study exposure, you should stick to 100% accuracy or validity. But in the case of confounding adjustment, generally editors or reviewers do not stick to I mean, the 100% accuracy or validity of comorbidity. So that in the real world data, I mean, to be honest, my, myself, I didn't pay much attention to comorbidity definition, but just adjusted. As available information. Thank you.